This box has been an absolute lifesaver for me and it might be for you too if you're planning on off-grid or van living. And when you have a DIY solar system, maintenance isn't as simple as just calling the repair guy or running to Home Depot to pick up some new batteries. In my case, my two lithium ion batteries that I've been putting hard to work running the gaming van for the past two years had some issues, so I had to send them out for warranty to look them over. That left me 100% powerless, no lights, no fridge, no heat, and no games. So with my batteries needing to be sent into warranty, there was no better time for this power public solar generator to show up, saving me from my power outage issues. One of the most difficult parts of a van build and one of the first pieces of the puzzle is your electrical system. A solar system is quite a bit. It consists of figuring out how to mount solar panels on top of your roof first of all and then calculating how many amps they'll make depending on how many watts they are and with that you can determine what gauge of wire you'll need and what fuses and charge controller is going to be the right size for the amount of power that you're making and then more math to figure out wire and fuse sizing to go from the charge controller to the batteries and from the batteries to the inverter and then for all of your 12 volt appliances there's quite a bit going on. So after you test your math skills, then you have to test your wiring skills actually installing all those components, which depending on your battery's BMS, that can mean working with hot terminals since you can't turn off power output to many batteries like you would flip a switch on a breaker in a house. So if you manage to get everything hooked up without pulling a Harry from Home Alone, you now successfully and unprofessionally hooked up a small firebomb inside your home, and now you're gonna be going to sleep wondering every night, did I tighten down that last bolt? Did I use the right size wires run into my inverter? Are my wires starting to get hot behind the cabinets? I wonder if I did that math right. Because if you size things improperly, they can potentially overheat, leading to a real house fire. Granted, I've had no issues at all with my DIY system. This is my first solar maintenance I've had in two years of living in the van. There are some perks of using a hardwired system, which I'll go over in a future video, breaking down my hardwired solar system and I might do a hardwired versus a solar generator setup talking about the pros and cons of doing it different ways. So you can DIY all of that and if you're not like me you might sleep just fine over top of the batteries and not have to worry about whether stuff rattled loose while you're driving to your newest destination or you can buy one box that does it all safely. Harness the solar by plugging in a panel, convert the power to be able to be stored in a stable safe LifePo 4 battery and use that power for 12 volt things like charging your phone and running small lights and with a 2200 watt inverter be able to run house plugs, charging laptops, running hair dryers, water heaters, everything you might use in a normal home. Having a 2,240 watt hour battery with a 2,200 watt rated inverter from running an Xbox gaming PC and ultra wide gaming monitor to even just a microwave. Along with just being able to simplify a solar system and make it a little bit more safe, it has a couple added benefits that my hardwire system doesn't have and these are the two things I'm most excited about. Solar power is really great when the sun is out. And in the winter months across the U.S., it's pretty common to have a few days in a row with little to no sunshine at all. And normally, I have no way of combating that issue other than preserving power, which can mean no video games, no movies, no editing or computer work, and sometimes when it's really low, even no heat. With this T2200, I have two ways to fight back against the clouds. First, I have the option of being able to bring the box with me wherever I'm hanging out for the day, whether I'm going to the park to play with Cassie and work on my phone, to the skate park to ride, or just a coffee shop to do some computer work. You can find a spot to plug in the T2200 with supplied charger, or if you're in a hurry, you can use their fast charger which is rated to 500 watts only 100 watts less than my solar panels can make in perfect condition and honestly i don't even know if i've seen my solar panels make a full 500 before secondly the one that i'm really hyped on is i can plug the t2200 into the van's phone charger and while i'm driving use the extra power from the alternator that usually would just be going to waste after the van's battery is completely full and store some of that power in my battery so once i get parked i'll have some juice you can get a folding solar panel kit with it which also has a perk of if the sun isn't hitting your van you can drag your battery out to where the sun is hitting, prop it up to where you can give me solar power. I could turn on every piece of electronics in my van with no issues at all, from the 800 watt microwave to an Xbox, PlayStation, monitor, fridge. And to give you a better idea on how much power this box can hold instead of just saying it can power everything in my van, here's some pretty good comparisons. And after you let your 500 watt blender run making smoothies for 4 hours straight non-stop, you can recharge it with the AC adapter in about 12 hours and the 12 volt car outlet in about 24 hours. Or if you're in a hurry, you can get it charged in about four hours with the fast charger, which is actually pretty nuts. So to sum everything up, PowerPublic makes four different size solar generators with all similar rad looking German design. They give you the ability to use electronics safely and easily, whether you're off grid or in a van, by storing power in a safe, stable LiFo 4 battery, capturing it with solar panels, a wall plug charger, or car chargers, and allowing you to use that power for everyday items with the onboard inverter and USB plugs. A major shout out to Power Public. I'll have an affiliate link for the box down below. You can also check out their smaller models and their one bigger model. So be sure to go down there and at least drop a follow on their social medias, even if you aren't shopping for one of these boxes, just to show appreciation from the Dance Gaming Van crew. 
they really saved me from my power outage issues and it really made me how smart it would be just to have the smallest box sitting around whether you're in a van or in a house something to charge your phones laptops and maybe plug in some lights in case you have a power outage in your house even make some coffee or watch the news if it's a long-term power outage if you want to see more van life gaming content hit the subscribe button we're traveling the country while running a racing sim rig and some other video games inside of a van in the future i plan to make a video using this box to power the sim racing rig in the middle of the woods so be sure to stick around to see that i think that should be pretty neat if you want to show any extra support there's a link below to our merch shop where you can buy some stickers shirts or hats if you made it this far in the video put a w in your comment so i know that you made it to the end and drop a like let me know if you have any questions on the unit thank you for watching hope to catch you in the next one